Now, if this doesn't blow you away, man, I honestly don't know what will. This man right here is working on something that's just so insane. And the information I'm gonna give you guys this video is gonna be wild. But before we start, I gotta go ahead and give a shout out to Terry because he is the one that actually sent me this on Twitter. So I gotta go ahead and give a shout out to him because I would not have found this if not for him. I, I'm watching the video and immediately, immediately I hear the voice acting and I pause the video. I said, my good man, is this available in dreams? No, it's not. Okay, continue the video. Continue watching the video and my brain is just blown away. It's blown away because we have people like this who are absolutely killing it, destroying it, making incredible stuff and not saying a word not saying a word. I want you guys to go ahead and listen to this right quick so you can go ahead and see what I'm talking about. I'm here, Gazi. Where's the fire? Zoning out on shift again? Please remember Wouldn't dream of it. Later. I'm always on call. What do you need? Got some gopher work for you. I need you to manually check the mining rigs. Get some real eyeballs on them. Uh, okay. I know. I know. You're blown away. You're like, what the heck? This is amazing. Who is this man? He goes by the name of Ethics. I the creator of the whole, you know, game and whatnot. Also, fun fact, this is pretty big, you know what I'm saying? He worked on some films for Harry Potter and James Bond. He did visual effects for those films. And I thought that was crazy. I'm like, yo, that's that's pretty big. He was really calm about it. He was like, yeah, you know, I did some stuff like that. But he has not actually done any kind of game design at all. So everything that you're seeing in Dreams, he made from scratch by himself. Now, the voice actors that you're hearing are actual professionals. I believe he said he got it from... <laughs> From somewhere called Coiling Club. I could be wrong. I was trying to hear what he was saying with that. I just don't know if I was saying it right. Um, he might be watching this video, so he might be able to comment about that if he wants to. But uh, yeah, he got the voice actors from that. All right. He also got screenwriters from a subreddit. And I believe all this was free. You know, they wanted to go ahead and work with him. You know, he told them about it. They're like, yeah, this sounds cool. And they started working. So yeah, as far as I know, he has play testers. He has voice actors. He has people working on the music and the screenwriting, like I was saying. So he has a lot of people helping him in terms of just trying to get the, the actual vision down correctly. And it's just the way he goes about it is just so, so interesting because you can tell that he's passionate about it. Like he is passionate about this and it's amazing. When I'm talking with him and I'm playing it, I felt like, yo, this is what Media Molecule was kind of envisioning for dreams. Someone who is very, very passionate about a project, working extremely hard, um, getting other people to work with him because he's been working on this for about a year. Yeah, about a year. And he said he has eight months to go like this. I mean. <laughs> Yo, he's really passionate about this. This isn't no little stuff. He's trying to get this whole experience down. And I wish you guys were there so you can kind of hear what he was saying. But yeah, like it's, it's a full thing. So yeah, I was talking to him and I was asking him, why do you want to make this game? And he was saying that he wanted to make a VR RTS game, which I had no idea what it was, but apparently it's like a strategy type game or something like that. And he said he wanted to make one because there's not really one that he likes like that. So he was like, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and make it myself. And that's what he did. And he was also saying that there's not much content for a PSVR and I agree. That's one of the reasons why I think PSVR for Dream is gonna be very, very popular um, in the PSVR community and such because the infinite possibilities and creators who are going to be making experiences uh, to be enjoyed in VR like this right here. So yeah, he said he made it for that. And honestly, I didn't know what RTS was before. I don't think I've ever played one before, not really. But after playing this, man, oh, this was so freaking cool. I absolutely love it. I was flying around on the flying controls are a bit kind of hard to get used to. I don't know if it was because I was using share play and it was lagging. It was like my first time using that, or first or second time using that. So it was kind of laggy or not. But uh, I was getting used to the flying and such. And then you had other things that was happening. <laughs> All right, it was a bit overwhelming, I'll be honest. Right, but it was so cool. When your ship is damaged, you can go ahead and repair uh, certain ones like shields, uh, the subsystem, other things. And you have like someone talking to you as well as everything is happening. Okay, the voice acting and the audio is a big thing. Okay, I think one thing about Dreams that is so amazing is that it, it shows you what really is important. And I tell you, brother, audio is extremely important. When you hear the audio for this, 
you're already super interested in what's happening because you're like, yo, this is going on. She's talking, boom, boom, this is happening. The sound effects, it's just, it's so, it's so epic. What you had to do was you had to use a ship to destroy their ship and these little drones thing were mad annoying, okay? They would come out of nowhere and hit you. You would spin out, you're like, what is happening? You gotta repair. And then as you're repairing, you kinda have to tell the fleets to, to attack certain things and you're attacking uh, certain uh, enemies as well. It was just so freaking crazy. He also had like tons of features in the actual ship. There was one where you can fast travel to another planet. There was also one where you can go at the speed of light to go to a planet that's kind of nearby. I think the thing that I really like about his game is that he's, he makes everything epic. You can actually see ships leave before you. You can see ships warp in as well. You can see ships landing at the carrier. It's just like, yo, all the stuff that's happening is incredible. And it's like this throughout the entire gameplay of just things happening while you're playing i'm just like yo he's really trying to bring everything alive you now he's trying to make it feel like an actual game and i like that so much all right so i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys gameplay so you guys can kind of get an idea of what i mean by how uh immersive this entire experience feels because of the audio and voice acting and everything that's going on so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys that and then i'm gonna end the video um afterwards so thank you guys for watching and i will catch you guys in the next one peace Welcome back, pilot. I'm told your last stack was partially damaged, resulting in some memory loss. I recommend re-familiarizing yourself with your ship's controls using the test flight simulation. Missions will be available once that's complete. Science team and crew transferring from Xerxes. The Mark III fighter is equipped with nano repair system. Any damaged subsystems can be repaired whilst in combat. Your ship will automatically repair whichever system is selected. Use the controls to select each subsystem to repair it fully. The Mark III fighter has the standard missile complement of eight. This can be restocked at any time by requesting a resupply drone. Request a drone now to refill your missile cache. Dazzy, come in. I believe that's the last of them. How are things on your end? Comms reestablished. Local cluster scans are back online. Wow. Did you look at that? We may have hit the mother load here. Great work, Saul. Come on back inside for some meatloaf. Saul, I just heard on the comms you're headed out here with me. Great to finally fly with you. A legendary Trident pilot. Don't get your hopes up, kid. You'll only be disappointed. You gotta have some stories to share from the war. Even one, perhaps something classified. Kid, keep your head 360. We don't know what we're flying into here. Right, right, of course. 360, yeah. Command, some of these rigs are scrap. Can't tell what from yet. Looks like the loads are lost. Gonna need manual collection. We're not alone out here. Is it Raiders? OC Separatists? Command, we got potential hostiles. What's our ROE? Take them out. Protect my rigs. That's why you're here. Moving to engage. Gavin, follow my lead. Right. On your mark. Ole, we have to report this to the commission. Report what? You saw those readouts. This is the biggest find we've ever seen. Start filing reports with the wild accusations that EMC will lock this cluster down until a thorough investigation is conducted. You'll do the job I brought you out here for, defending the interests of the Trafalgar. Oleg? Come on back inside for debrief. I wouldn't be mentioning this to anyone else. Secrets help bind us together, keep us alive. Catch my drift? Sir. Saul? Saul? I'm here, Gazi. Looks like the signal interference from the asteroids is affecting cops. Good, good. Well, not the interference, but you're okay.
Destruction of the flagship has slowed the initial assault. However, the fleet has suffered heavy losses. Deep space telemetry has discovered possible coordinates of an enemy supply point. We need to perform a reconnaissance operation to uncover the enemy supply network. Follow the suspected ships undetected and report any data. Intel recommends using a cloaking device to aid this mission.